Good morning, friends and family near and far of St. Mark's Lutheran Church. Welcome to worship on this, the seventh and final Sunday of the season of Easter. What a crazy thought, right? That we've come so far in this time of COVID-19 and, and being online for worship. I, I deeply appreciate your patience, your flexibility, your commitment to the one another in this community of faith. And I thank God that we are able to gather in this space virtually. So welcome to worship. God is truly active in our midst. Uh, and it's been really exciting to see the ways that God is moving in your lives uh, where you are. Today for worship, I invite you during the, during the open voluntary, take a moment with your family and gather a, a bucket or a bowl of water. Tap water is fine because at the beginning of worship today, we'll remember our baptism with a thanksgiving for baptism. And so I invite you to take a moment to splash in the water. Mark the sign of the cross on your forehead. Remember that you are God and that nothing you can do can separate you from God's love. So we'll give thanks for the gift of baptism. Also encourage you to grab the Bible in your house, whether it's your personal one, your family one, a children's one. Grab a Bible. Uh, open God's word to live and breathe among us. Turn to the pages of scripture from which we'll read today. Uh, first from the book of Acts. Next, we'll read from the book of 1 Peter and then the book of the Gospel according to John. Uh, we'll give you the specific verses and chapters later, um, but find a family Bible and, and have that ready. It's good to read God's Word together. And of course, as always, we give thanks to the Spirit who gathers us, who enlightens us and sanctifies us, who brings us into this virtual space of worship together. I am thankful for each of you, um, and I pray that you are well and that you are, are with family and friends, and that you are surrounded by the love of community of faith. And if you should need anything in this time, please, please call upon us. For now we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us prepare our hearts, our minds, our body, and our souls for worship with the prelude. <laughs> Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed! Alleluia! 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 Christ has risen indeed! Alleluia! Christ is risen indeed! Hallelujah. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. 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 Christ is risen. Alleluia. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O oh God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden 
In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the Good Shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross you watered us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water. For water in this font, for water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord and the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray. O God of glory, your Son, Jesus Christ, suffered for us and ascended to your right hand. Unite us with Christ and each other in suffering and joy, that all the world may be drawn into your bountiful presence through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us now take time together to open God's word, to open scripture so that it might live and breathe and move among us, that it might be interpreted for us in this time and in this place, that the spirit might speak to each of us. So turn in scripture to the New Testament, past the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, to the book of Acts. We begin in the book of Acts, Acts of the Holy Spirit among the Apostles. In the first chapter, verses 6 through 11, we hear the story of Jesus blessing his disciples and ascending. Next, we'll turn to the book of 1 Peter. 1 Peter in the fourth chapter, verses 12 through 14, and chapter 5, 6 through 11. Take time to find that letter as well. Finally, we, we turn to the gospel according to John in the 17th chapter. In the 17th chapter, verses 1 through 11, we hear Jesus' final prayer to God on behalf of the disciples and the apostles and the followers um, before he turns to the cross. So take time to find God's word in those places. Um, and as we read them together, we sing, we pray, and we hear them proclaimed. Reading from Acts. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go to heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, and Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoted themselves to prayer together with a certain woman, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The Word of God. Thanks be to God.
A reading from 1 Peter. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the Spirit of glory, which is the Spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kind of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal Glory in Christ will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is the Holy Gospel according to St. John in the 17th chapter. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave from me the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you, for the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one, as we are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. It's a dark, graveled parking lot, and in the corner there's one old lamppost shining dimly a bit of light into the corner. And underneath is a man searching for something that he's lost, something important to him. He's on his hands and knees, looking around, digging in the dirt. And the first passerby comes by and says, what are you doing? And he says, I, I lost something important to me, and I'm looking for it. Would you mind helping? Well, of course, I'll help you. And so they get on all fours, and now they start digging around in the gravel parking lot. And a third person comes by and says, what are you looking for? What are you doing? And they say, well, we lost something important. Would you mind helping? And they say, of course. They get down and start helping. Eventually, four, five, six people now crawling around in this gravel parking lot looking for something that is lost and important to that first person. Finally, a passerby says, what are you all doing digging around in this gravel parking lot? They look to the first person who looks up and says, well, I've lost something very important to me and these gracious folks are helping me to find it. Would you help us as well? That passerby says, well, of course I'd help you find it. But can I ask, where did you lose it? 
and say, oh, well, I lost it over there, but the light's a lot better over here. <laughs> now, that's a silly camp skit, I know. But I think there is some truth to it for all of us deep down inside. Like, we like to be in the light. Even when we know we must search in the darkness or step forward into the unknown or uncertain and spend some time there digging around on our hands and knees and getting dirty and, and spreading the light. But we like to be in the comfort zone where the light is greatest and we can see with clarity and we, we feel warm and cozy and, and calm and everything is certain. We know where our foot will land next when we step forward. That's where we like to be. We don't always like to be in the dark, do we? after the resurrection where Jesus had appeared to disciples multiple times it, it tells us in the first chapter of Acts verse 6 that when the apostles met with Jesus they asked him Lord will you at this time give the kingdom back to Israel and Jesus says the times and occasions are set by the fathers on authority it is not for you to know when they will be but when the Holy Spirit comes upon you you will be filled with the power and you will be witnesses for me in Jerusalem and Samaria and all the ends of the earth. And after this, he was taken to heaven. They watched him. A cloud hid him from their sight. We like to be in the light, not in the dark. And in this moment of the first chapter of Acts, the ascension story, the disciples are with Jesus and, and they're, they're yearning to know more and discover more from their teacher, their Messiah, and now resurrected Savior. And he ascends from them and says, you will be my witnesses. At St. Mark's, we have all these old photo albums, and they are remarkable. I mean, they are filled with pictures, with, with birth announcements and certificates and, and weddings and, and building dedications and pictures of pig roasts and Sunday school. And they're remarkable to look at. And, and I think about all of these saints who have gone before us, these wonderful siblings in Christ, whom I may never have the opportunity to meet or have not met in life. But I think about the gift of the Spirit and the power of Christ's light to work through each of us and how they are a cloud of witnesses, witnesses to you and me through the generations of God's love and that someone was a witness to them and what it means to teach and nurture and empower one another in God's love. I think about the gift of the saints and the cloud of witnesses who have gone before us and empower us to be witnesses ourselves people who have been in the light of Christ and have shared that light with others. And all these photos make me think about this recent um, challenge that's going around on social media to, to post the last photo on your phone when things were normal, before all the COVID-19 and the quarantine time. And so people post all these photos before life really changed, kind of life in the light as things were before they'd be journeying into the darkness of this uncertain period of time. Kind of think about this ascension moment as, as the disciples' last photo before things change, their last photo of normalcy as Jesus ascends and is hidden from their sight. And, and now they've been blessed and charged to be witnesses to all the ends of the earth. And they're in this small waiting period of, of uncertainty between the ascension and Pentecost when the Spirit will descend in tongues of fire and send them forth during this waiting period. I think about us too. From our last photo of normalcy until now we're in this waiting quarantine time, this weird period of uncertainty of what life might look like. So I think about what do we do in that time? What do our daily routines look like when we're stuck at home and we're on furlough, we've lost our jobs, or we're out of school? What do our daily lives look like when we make to-do lists and home projects and keep ourselves busy just moving from one meal to the next or one sleep to the next until hopefully something else comes along that is better and more hope-filled? What do we do with ourselves in these weird times? So think about our spiritual lives in this quarantine time of waiting. When we can't be physically present in this place of worship, 
shoulder to shoulder with our siblings in Christ to sing God's name, to praise God and, and, and shout hallelujah, to receive the sacraments, to be fed and nourished and empowered by the Spirit. I know we so deeply lament that we can't be present at this time. And so spiritually, sometimes it might feel as though the light begins to dim. That we're scratching and clawing and searching in darkness. And the longer we are away from our house of worship, it might start to feel like we can't witness to the gospel message as we have been blessed and charged to do so. How do we go about the ministry of Jesus into the world when we can't be physically present in worship in this place? siblings, the reality is that even when we're able to come back together in person for worship, things just won't be the same as they once were. Things will be different. on to say that they returned to Jerusalem from the Mount of Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And when they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew and Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. And all these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer constantly devoting themselves to prayer. I think it's so inspiring. I mean, it's beautiful. It's convicting, really, that the disciples who are no longer able to worship in the presence of God and on holy ground with Jesus, as they're waiting for their mission to the world to begin, to be empowered and moved, they devote themselves constantly to the ministry of prayer to the gift and persistence of prayer. They devote themselves to prayer in their waiting. One of my favorite parts of worship happens at the very end. We process to the back of the church. We, we sing the final hymn and everyone gathers around the font and the assisting minister says, go in peace to love and serve the Lord and the whole congregation says, thanks be to God. And in that little conversation between go in peace to serve the Lord and thanks be to God is this, this huge space in which we affirm our calling to be the body of Christ for the world, where we acknowledge that yes, on this holy ground, we come together as a community to be fed and nourished and inspired and empowered. We come to sing and pray and dine together, but we also acknowledge that we are blessed we are charged and we are sent through the font of the waters of baptism into the world to be witnesses to the whole world. It is our affirmation that beyond this place, we are the body of Christ for the world called to be witnesses to all the ends of the earth. I know that it is very hard not to be in this place, to not be present here for worship, to not be among our siblings in praise and song. I know how hard that is, but I think, I think so much that in this in-between time, like the disciples who devoted themselves to prayer when Jesus was gone from their physical presence, we too will realize and learn and understand that we are the church that this building is not where the light shines and we come to search and find something, but rather we realize that from this building we are sent into the darkness and we are lights for the world. We are the church for the world. We are the body of Christ. My siblings, you and me, we are God's light for the world. 
And as much as it hurts to not be in this place, we know that wherever we are right now, we don't wait for God to act. We devote ourselves to faith in God, that God is acting through us, and that we are the body of Christ for our siblings across this world. In a time of COVID-19, of war and poverty and oppression, in a time where the world cries out and longs for God's presence, we are God's work in the world now. We are the church. The building might be locked, the lights off. A Jesus may have ascended to heaven and no longer physically present for the disciples, but the church isn't close. The church isn't dead. God is not dead. God is fully alive. God is present and active in the body of Christ. The disciples there are formed into the body of Christ. We to this day and always are the body of Christ and the church is more open than ever. We do not wait for God to act, rather we live into God's action now and we are lights for the world in uncertain times. We are proclaimers of hope in uneasy and unprecedented situations. We are God's church, here, now, and forever alive in the world. So go in peace. Devote yourself to God in prayer and the ministry of the world for one another.
guided, strengthened, and cheered by the Spirit of God, let us proclaim what we believe. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come in his glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and in all places, praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. O oh God, call your people to be one as you are one. Unite your church in the truth of your gospel, the love of our neighbor, and the call to proclaim your reign to all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Breathe life into your creation. Guide your people as we explore the mysteries of the universe. We pray for the work of scientists and mathematicians. Math Try this again. Breathe life into your creation. Guide your people as we explore the mysteries of the universe. We pray for the work of scientists and mathematicians like Nicholas Copernicus and Leonard Euler, whom the church commemorates today. Their skill enriches our understanding of your creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Make your justice known among the nations of the earth. Protect the vulnerable. Redirect those who use violence and greed as weapons. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Come to the aid of your children. We pray for those engulfed in grief, those without supportive families, and for all who are sick, isolated, powerless, or afraid. Especially, we pray for Alvin, Andy, Angela, Angela, Barbara, Bill, Camille, Carolyn, Clay, Debbie, Dr. Allen, Elaine, Jenna, Iris, Hal, Jamie, Julie, Karen, Karen, Keenan, Ken, Leslie, Linda, Laurie, Margaret, Marie, Maria, Mark, Maya, Mimi, Marion, David, Pam, Pastor Bernie, Patty, Paula, Peggy, Pete, Philippe, Palm, Robert, Rosemary, Shirley, Towns, Wendy, Wendy, Zachary, Habitha, Lee, Jim, the family and friends of Irene in her recent passing, and those we name aloud or in our hearts. May all rest their anxieties in your care, Lord. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Give courage to all who embark on new ventures. We especially remember this day those who risk their lives to serve in our armed forces. Grant safety to those serving at home or abroad and assure them of your never failing strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our peace and our strength. We pray for our nation and the world as we face uncertainties around coronavirus. Protect the most vulnerable among us 
especially all who are currently sick or in isolation. Grant wisdom, patience, and clarity to healthcare workers, especially as their work caring for others puts them at grace, great risk. Guide us as we consider best how to prepare and respond in our families, congregations, workplaces, and communities. Give us courage to face these days, not with fear or arrogance, but with compassion, concern, and acts of service, trusting that you abide with us always. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Rise all you saints to eternal life until that day we give you thanks for the faithful example of those who have listened to your voice and now rest in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. My friends, the peace of Christ be with you always and also with you. Let us share a sign of peace with one another. And in this place, this community of faith of St. Mark's, I give thanks to you for your faithful support of ministry and mission in this place, for your commitment to one another in this time, to the building of relationships and the furthering of community, for your flexibility, your patience, your creativity, and your commitment to the gospel ministry. I also thank you for your financial contributions to St. Mark's that enable us to carry out the mission and ministry of this place. And we ask that you continue to faithfully commit your gifts to St. Mark's. And you can do so in a variety of ways. You can mail the check directly to our church office where it is picked up and processed each week. You can go online to www.stmarksjacks.org slash give now and make your gift online. Or you could download the Give Plus app from any app store. Search for St. Mark's Lutheran Church by name or our, area code, our zip code 32207. And when you find the St. Mark's tab, you can click the plus sign in the right corner and make your gift that way as well. In all things, time, commitment, passion, relationship, financial and otherwise, we give thanks to God that it is all God's and we have the opportunity to steward it in this time and in this place. Thank you and thanks be to God. And now we close our time together with giving thanks to God's word. God's word of truth and hope and love and grace and mercy that is proclaimed, it's read, it's sung, and it's prayed. And we give thanks this day for God's word. So join me, if you will, for a thanksgiving of the word. Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God. For by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O oh God. We give you thanks and praise. By your word, you called your people Israel to tell you of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O oh God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness, forgiveness through the cross, Life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you, through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Gather then to one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. 
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life and fill you with hope. Turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God.